Cryo-EM is now a well-established technique for structure determination. The pharmaceutical and biotechnology industries are increasingly turning to cryo-EM to solve the structure of proteins that are difficult or impossible to crystallize. As you can see here from these headlines in articles that I found online and in the literature, there is tremendous enthusiasm and interest in the industry to use cryo-EM for drug discovery. There are probably hundreds, if not thousands, of structural biology groups and companies worldwide that are keen to test this technique, um, assess its value for their drug discovery programs, and even adopt it as a uh, routine in their structure-based drug design uh, pipeline. It is also known that cryo-EM is an expensive technique. Um, it requires an enormous investment to set up a cryo-EM facility in-house. And this is not only because the top tier instruments are very expensive, but also because there are ongoing high maintenance and operational costs. It is still difficult to find personnel who have the expertise to run such a facility efficiently. And the method also places um, very high demands on computational infrastructure. All of this combined makes it impractical and for most companies financially impossible to set up a cryo-EM facility in-house. So how do all these cryo -E, how do all these structural biology groups then access cryo-EM? One possible solution to this problem is to outsource the cryo-EM workflow, including um, sample preparation, data collection, and structure determination. So in the next 15 minutes or so, I would like to tell you what nanoimaging services is doing to make cryo-EM accessible and affordable to our clients. We consider ourselves a one-stop solution to outsourcing cryo-EM. We have been a provider of transmission electron microscopy services with specialization in cryo-EM since 2007, when the company was founded by Bridget Carraher and Clint Potter, who are directors of cryo-EM centers, uh, academic cryo-EM centers in New York City. We at Nano Imaging Services have provided high resolution 3D structure determination services since June 2017, when we commissioned our first Titan Creos electron microscope. We have two state-of-the-art facilities and instruments, which I'll show you in the next couple of slides. We've developed an automated pipeline and deep knowledge of the cryo-EM method. We're now well-trusted by pharma, and we have serviced over 150 pharmaceutical and biotech companies worldwide. We offer a wide variety of access methods to our microscopes that I will describe in more detail. We have two locations in the United States. Our headquarters are located in San Diego, where we have four microscopes. And we just recently opened our new facility in Woburn, Massachusetts, which is just north of Boston. There we have one microscope, and we have the intention to add additional microscopes as the demand increases. We can add additional microscopes quickly in both locations through a special partnership with uh, Thermo Fisher Scientific, the manufacturer of these microscopes. So we have a Tech 9 T12 microscope, which is primarily used for negative staining, but also cryo-EM, although not high resolution structure determination. We have a Glacios microscope in San Diego and in Woburn. Um, these microscopes are equipped with a Falcon 3 or 4 direct detector, and the microscopes are primarily used for cryo-EM grid screening, but also moderate to even high resolution stru structure determination. Both microscopes are also equipped with a SATA D camera, which is necessary for micro ED experiments, which I'll talk more about later in this presentation. We have two Titan Creos microscopes in San Diego. They are equipped with a K3 direct detector, an energy filter, and one of them has a faceplate. Because we own these microscopes and have a large capacity, it is very easy for us to schedule our client projects with minimum delay. We can also give our clients multiple consecutive days of data collection, which is sometimes necessary for difficult projects. So how do clients access these microscopes? A project typically begins with a consultation. We meet with our prospective clients, we discuss their project, we gather information about their protein, how it's purified and what buffer it is what other orthogonal data the client already has that suggests the protein is suitable for cryo-EM. 
We ask about the client's background in electron microscopy. Are they new to the method or are they already experts? And um, based on all of this information, um, the goals of the project are defined and a proposal is put together in uh, consultation with the client and the project is then scheduled. Now, because all clients are a little bit different and they have different specific needs, we offer different access modes to these microscopes. One access mode is typical for a CRO. It's a fee of service uh, access mode where we can even start with a protein and negative stain and take it all the way through to 3D reconstruction. A unique access mode that we offer is our training centered partnership, which has been very successful and very popular with our clients. In this access mode, we offer our clients to visit NIS and be trained in the basics of cryo-EM. We teach them how to prepare cryo-EM grids, how to load them into the microscopes, um, how to initiate a data collection, how to evaluate the quality of cryo-EM images, and also get them started in the first steps of data um, processing. This um, partnership involves dedicated time on the Creus and Glacios microscopes, and each client uh, uh, is assigned to one of our scientists who will train them. The third access mode is called PRT microscope access, um, which stands for participating research team, and it mimics a little bit how you access um, time on a synchrotron, for instance. In this case, the clients are already quite experienced. They can make their own grids in-house and send them to NIS just for screening and data collection. So these access modes are modular and flexible and they can be further uh, tailored to, a uh, to the specific needs of a client. Data collection at NIS is performed with Legionon, a software that was developed by the founders of the company. And here you see a typical screenshot of a um, data collection that is, for instance, in progress on the CREOS. These images can be viewed from anywhere in the world using web-based tools, and clients can view and evaluate images in real time as the data collection is, undergo is underway. Um, it allows clients to provide direction as to targeting and grid selection. Some of our clients are very experienced and want to be involved, and we are in almost continuous um, communication with them during their data collection days. The data are usually directly uploaded electronically to our clients so that they can start with data processing. In the event that we are tasked with uh, solving the structure of this protein, we use our integrated pipeline, which supports rapid in-house imaging and processing. For example, we use CryoSpark Life and CryoSpark in general for data processing and structure determination. Here is a table that shows um, a few stats um, with our first Titan Creas electron microscope, which we commissioned in June 2017. Um, we uh, completed over 200 projects until June 2020. We have, of these 200 uh, data sets, processed 66 in-house. The other ones were processed by our clients. We determined 63 protein structures, 33 of them membrane proteins, and 25 soluble proteins. These soluble proteins, in many cases, represented very large complexes. I want to point out that of the structures that we solved, many were complexed with small molecule ligands, and we were able to visualize these. This further supports the notion that cryo-EM is a method that can support structure-based drug design. I'd also like to point out that the majority of our structures solved had a resolution of at least 3.5 angstrom. Many of them were significantly higher in resolution and fell between two to two two to 3.0 Armstrong. I cannot reveal what the identity of these proteins is or who our clients are. Um, every project is governed by a confidentiality agreement, giving our clients peace of mind that these projects are kept confidential and that um, the uh, project is conducted in a tightly controlled commercial environment just to show you that we know how to solve structures, though, here are two highly anonymized samples. In the first one, we solved the structure of adeno-associated virus, um, which is structurally pretty well defined in a particle that has high symmetry. This structure was solved at 1.8 angstrom resolution. 
the um, capsid protein of AAV has primarily beta sheet uh, secondary conformation. And you see here a snapshot of the cryo-EM map with the beta strands nicely resolved. Here's the cryo-EM map of a tryptophan side chain. It looks um, very nice and is of high quality. Um, we also map epitopes on the surface of poliovirus at high resolution. Here, another snapshot of the cryo-EM map, which made it possible without problem to dock in the structure of the capsid proteins of poliovirus and map this epitope in, in detail. So these examples uh, illustrate what is generally known as single particle analysis in cryo-EM. But recently, a new application of cryo-EM was introduced that is referred to as microED, microelectron diffraction, and it's made quite a quite a big splash in the community. Um, as the name suggests, this method uses electron diffraction of very small crystals to solve the structure of proteins or small molecules and everything in between. At Nano Imaging Services, we have put quite a bit of time and effort into developing microED as a service for our clients. So instead of using x-rays as a radiation source, you use an electron beam in a microscope to collect the fraction patterns from very small crystals and solve the structure. The um, difference between electrons and x-rays is that electrons interact with matter differently from um, x-rays, and that makes it possible to collect the fraction patterns from very small crystals. Um, we use our Glacius electron microscopes for microED experiments. They have been equipped with a SATA D camera, as I uh, mentioned in the beginning. And this camera has a sensor that makes it possible to detect the very weak high uh, resolution diffraction spots that come from these very small crystals. The microscopes have already also been optimized. The hardware has been optimized to make it more straightforward to collect these diffraction patterns. Um, this slide shows the microED workflow. We primarily work with uh, small molecules at this point, which clients submit as dry powders. We ask our clients to confirm that these powders contain uh, crystalline material, and this is usually done by um, powder diffraction data. The um, Powder is then applied to the grid. The grid is inserted into the microscope and the grids are, uh, the crystals are targeted. You can see here a scale bar of two micrometer and this is a very small nanometer sized crystal that is entirely suitable for data collection. The grid, the stage on which the grid is located is then continuously rotated in the electron beam from minus 60 to plus 60 degrees. So we collect 120 degrees of data and the camera is operated in rolling shutter mode, collecting the diffraction data as the stage rotates. The data are then processed in a manner that is very similar to what X-ray crystallographers do. In fact, the um, electron diffraction data can be processed with many of the programs that were written for X-ray crystallography. At Nano Imaging Services, we use dials, but many of the other packages can be used as well. I want to point out, though, that there are many nuances to microED data processing, and even a seasoned crystallographer or a crystallographer who is very familiar with small molecule crystallography will have to train themselves a little bit in order to know how to use the data that come from this electron microscope in these packages that were originally written for X-ray crystallography data. At NIS, we are in active collaboration with developers at DIALS to improve microED micro data processing. And we typically, for our clients, collect data from uh, 20 crystals and either send this data to our clients or process it in-house. And we have um, been 100% successful in solving structures for our clients. So with this, I want to end. It is our mission at NIS to make um, cryo-EM uh, accessible to our clients and thereby help them improve and accelerate drug design and development. Thank you.